Hello everybody, my name's Carl, Carl Lehman from Dream It Planet Live It, and I'd like to introduce you today to uh, Natalie Cash, who you can see on the screen with me. Say hello, Natalie. Hiya. Hello. Well, um, as many of you will know, I've been running this series called Coffee with Carl, and that's a bit of cliche, I know, uh, but it's been basically, uh, over the past couple of months, I've been a little bit disappointed about what goes out on social media out there. There's a lot of negativity going on, and I just thought, I know lots of great people who are in business, who are very optimistic about the future, and what we want to do is bring some of their optimism to um, you know, your world, if you will. So just by way of an introduction, um, I, I, I know, I've known Natalie now for quite a while, haven't I, Natalie? And since moving down to sort of Devon, uh, I think you were one of the first uh, business people that I uh, met down here. So uh, I, one thing that really impressed me about Natalie is that um, she's involved in two uh, local businesses down here, both of which are absolutely cracking businesses. Um, and I just genuinely, you know, admired and respected, you know, what, what, what your businesses do. Um, and also, not only that, your contribution to the wider community. So just by way of an introduction, um, Natalie, tell us a little bit more about yourself. So I'm Natalie, um, I work for Finnish Electrical and Fire Secure, um, local company is based in Paynton in Devon. Um, we, so Finnish Electrical is um, a domestic commercial industrial electrical contracting company and Fire Secure is a dedicated fire and security company. Okay, thanks for that. So I, if I was to ask you what your burning desire is as a, as a, as a, as a person, what would you say Natalie? Uh, so burning desire business-wise, um, would be to basically cr create a successful business, not just one that's based on success via um, profit, but one that is, you know, it's out there with its, you know, great reputation. I mean, reputation is um, something that we are really proud of here. Um, I feel like we've created great brands and people know us for it. Yeah. Personally, with... Um, burning desire, it would be just to continue pushing forward with the charity work that I do. Um, Rowcroft is our chosen charity of the year, as you know, um, and you know, a few, a few events have been cancelled so far this year, unfortunately, due to COVID-19. So um, just helping and supporting them the way that we can at the moment, um, in forms of you know, donations and stuff. I took a, a collection to them um, last week, which I managed to get together PPE because I was really struggling for that. Um, I got together some food for the staff and also some pampering products. So yeah, just continue with that while we can. Brilliant. Well done you. And it's great that you give him back to the kind of local community uh, and doing something there and that kind of corporate responsibility to kind of why, you know, helping the wider community, I feel mm. is just like really, really fantastic. So thinking about your own business this is a question that I ask all of my sort of business owner clients, but mm -hmm. I'm just curious from, from your business at the moment, what's, what, what's your number one business priority? Uh, I think like everyone, just to get to the other side of this this pandemic, really, we uh, unfortunately know that some businesses aren't going to survive this. Um, and they're not going to come out the other side. So um, I just want to carry on implementing changes within the companies to ensure that we get out the other side in an even stronger position, really, which I, I know that yourself, you you know, you're very active on everything that you're doing. Sure. Um, and I know a lot of people are, you know, are actively doing that. So, yeah, that's our priority at the moment. Yeah, I think it's true to say that in any sort of market conditions, there are always sort of winners and loser aren't, losers, aren't there? Um, and it's just one of those things that actually, if we can harness the opportunities that are there, sometimes you have to look, you know, um, hard. And sometimes those opportunities can be disguised as hard work and you just have to yeah. get your head down and go for it. Yeah, so definitely. thinking about opportunities, what opportunities yeah. do you see in the marketplace for your business, Natalie? Um, so... <sighs> I think with the quality of our installs, that's that's where our strengths are. So um, because our installs are so good and the quality that we deliver is so good, we, we kind of stand out from the competition, really, and to those all around us. Um, for example, we've um, worked hard behind the scenes to get involved with an architectural company that's quite large in the area. Um, Want has worked with, with them alongside them for, for about five years now, Carl. So... Um, we have been doing work for them recently on, on a few of their projects. They're um, bespoke new builds, you know, high-end new builds. Um, we have had feedback recently from them, which was lovely to hear that 
they've not seen that quality of workmanship in, in 20 odd years of trading. Um, and for them to, you know, give us that feedback after us wanting to work with them for so long was lovely. Um, even other electrical yeah. contractor that, that have done work in the property on other things have commented on that too. So, um, yeah, just, I think the opportunity is there if you can be different and that's how we kind of differentiate ourselves between other, you know, people in the area. That's brilliant. And, and the fact that you, you, you harness that, I mean, I've seen some of the projects that you work on and it's really, really cool stuff, isn't it? You know, you, yeah. and the quality of workmanship is, is exceptional. And yeah. you know, forgive me for saying this, but you know, when, when you deal with trades companies, sometimes you can get this image, can't you? What like a yeah. trades company can be like. And the thing that just really sort of, um, overwhelmed me was just your whole professionalism as a as a corporate being in terms of what you do and how you do it and uh that's not always something that's shared in 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 the trades sort of uh area so uh, well done you for that um, i just think that you know with that carl it's you know i've got a, a lengthy background in customer service as well as well as um you know healthcare so i mean i don't think it's hard to have that you know, customer service is so important and what I kind of give out is what I expect. And when I don't get that, you know, I'm really disappointed as I know that you've had you know, experiences with people not even turning up. And, and that's just the first impression you get from someone. You've arranged to go and see someone to quote some work, arrive on time, arrive, you know, slightly earlier. They can see you outside waiting, you know, it's just the little things that matter to a customer. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we always say that it's the little things that make the big difference. And, mm. uh, you know, I know that your business and our business is we, we share that commonality in terms of, you know, we, um, we want to be referable and therefore, you know, it, it means doing certain things, doesn't it? It means yes. turning up on time when you say you'll do. It means following through on your promises and delivering on your promises. And, and, and just having certain, you know, qualities that make you referable. And, uh, you know, it's great that, you know, you, you do that. In terms of your business, I mean, are, are you covering just Devon? Tell us a little bit more about, you know, what you do and where you do it, really. So, you know, we're, we're national. We have um, have regular work in London, for example. Um, we've worked recently for Finnish Electrical in Wales um, at the um, our hospital, the Glamorgan Hospital. Um, so that was um, in the new areas that they've created for, for COVID-19, so it's a waiting area, um, sorting out stuff there for them. So um, in our area, you know, working in the norm at the Southampton, working a lot, um, Team Bridge, Tor Bay, uh, and the wider Devon areas, but we do travel nationally for our work, yeah, for both okay. companies, that is, yeah. Okay, that's good to know, good to know. And now, I, I'm aware of something that you've got, going on at the moment you've got a smart piece of tech going on in terms of one of the solutions that you've got potentially for um a certain sector out there and, and this is very much um in line with sort of covid19 and everything the, the challenges that go on can you tell us a little bit more about that natalie yeah of course so, say that just as you're taking a slurp of the drink yeah there. i know i've got, I've got, got my with myself Paul, i saw you yeah um so basically they're fever fever screaming screening cameras um, technical name from this thermal cameras that you might have heard about. Um, at the moment, they're mainly used for fever screening. So, uh, with the current pandemic, the cameras, uh, I think, are just going to kind of become the norm, like normal CCTV. We walk through that all the time. We don't necessarily, right. you know, know about it or aware of it. Um, so, this camera has been fitted already in Bournemouth Airport, and um, Amazon, for example, as a company, have had them fitted. Um, so the cameras, um, they basically, um, they detect an elevated body temperature. So if you've got it at the entrance um, going through to, uh, you know, commercial premises, they can detect multiple people going into the building and they, it will alarm if someone has got a heightened temperature, which is obviously, we all know, is one of the first signs for COVID-19. Wow. Um, so... Yeah, once it's detected a temperature, it will alarm, it will say that there's a temperature, you know, detected. And then the people in the building can then go ahead and maybe do a secondary temperature reading or isolate when necessary. Um, so you haven't got, you're not paying for someone to stand there with a handheld version or anything, you know, or testing with just a normal, you know, thermometer just to check people's temperatures going into the building. So it will do multiple people's temperatures going into a building. 
Um, they have accuracy to 0.3 degrees Celsius, so they're really accurate. Um, and it just takes one second to detect um, the skin surface temperature of the person. Um, so we um, really, yeah, really excited to see, you know, where these are being used all around the country. You can see it on the news. There was a, a, a um, feature the other day about them. So we um, we can just see it opening opportunities. You know, there's there's lots of businesses around here that have had to close because of COVID and the rules that have you know been put into place by the government. Um, hotels, for example, if you could guarantee that everyone going into that building and staying in your hotel you know it didn't have a temperature i don't know about you carl but i would be more than happy to book that hotel for when we're allowed to because it means that they're you know they're thinking ahead and it's safety of everyone obviously we're going to come out of this and everyone's going to be you know more conscious about everything aren't they you know interacting sure. with people you know we've, we've been restricted haven't we like yeah we've all adapted like you know with with these meetings and and everything that we're doing so yeah i just think it's going to help businesses market themselves as well you know it's safety of everyone all around you know we don't know who we come into contact with we just hope that obviously they haven't got any symptoms we're relying on everyone to you know if be mindful of everything and to isolate when necessary but after this it's all going to be still in the forefront of our minds, isn't it? You know, the how, what, how the world's going to change. So the cameras are going to be re a really key, you know, to getting a lot of businesses up and running quickly. It sure is a, a, another layer of protection, isn't it, that people can uh, offer. Mm. Um, obviously, you know, heightened temperature, as we all know, is, is one of the many symptoms that can be through sort of COVID-19. But mm. absolutely, it's a, it's a strategy that, you know, businesses can do. Um, so you say it's in Bournemouth Airport at this moment in time. Yes. So where, where do you see this actually being installed? Where do you see the actual sort of commercial usages for this? We've got a lot of interest from um, nursing homes, for example. Um, you know, we know that the at-risk categories include the elderly. You know, they're the ones that are really suffering. Um, after this, you know, when COVID-19 is hopefully a distant memory and, you know, there's a vaccine and everything like that, this camera will still help because... You don't want anyone going into a nursing home that have got a temperature that could potentially, you know, be harmful to, to you know, one of the residents there. Well, you know, you don't want staff point. even coming in. They might not know they've got a temperature or anything. But as soon as that's alerted, they will not be permitted to go into the buildings. Right. So, yeah, it's going to be really good key in, in areas like that. Interesting that, actually. And uh, it's amazing how you can embrace technology, isn't it, to... Mm -hmm. uh, give you extra layers of protection and uh, I mean I've got a number of clients who are hoteliers in the area and I know that they are feeling experience in terms of pain in their business because mm. they, they can't open up at the moment so you know that's something that you know certainly we'll have to have a conversation about in terms of you know perhaps have no you know, word with those people and seeing yeah. how it might affect you know or implementing their businesses I yeah. mean my, my, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking that kind of technology that's used at Bournemouth Airport, you know, my goodness me, Natalie, surely that's bound to cost like 10, 15, 20k or something. Is, is that the case? Where, where are we at on that? No, so there's different, we need to do a site survey because there's a couple of different models that are available and obviously it's suitable um, for all areas, but, you know, it depends on the, the span that you need to cover basically the area that you're covering with people going into the properties so it needs uh, it needs us to have some background information on the properties before we can give it a quote but nowhere near you know it is it is a good bit of kit there's others on the market that we've researched and it's not something that we've taken lightly a decision on which one we use um, but there's different options suited for different environments so it's really key that we go and have a look at the different properties and then quote for the ones that are suitable for that environment rather than just going in with we'll only pick one this is what you're having and it's not suitable for them um, so also though we we do offer finance options so I know that at the moment a lot of businesses have had to shut their doors like hotels and you know we're in a very tourism you know market down here in Devon and there's a lot of B&Bs a lot of hotels that are really struggling right now sure. so Obviously, they want to be thinking ahead and thinking to the future, but maybe that is something that concerns them, the price of, of units and stuff, which is something we can go through and, and finance as an option through the company. 
that's really cool and i like the fact that you you've got like a bespoke approach is a bit like what we do we don't have a one size fits all for mm -hmm. every one of our, our clients yeah, it's about exactly. working out what their uh their objectives are and then designing a planned solution for that so that's that's yeah. kind of really cool and the fact mm -hmm. that you've got finance options i mean i'm just staggered that you know you can detect you know you know people's temperatures in, in literally one second flat that that, yeah. that is brilliant we will be putting yeah. out um our own videos of testing the the equipment so people can see um things like walking through with a cup of coffee or a cup of tea will not set them off which is going to be a frequently asked question you know oh, that's interesting. you're walking through and you know it's it's a high temperature product you know yeah, yeah. it's not going to alarm it will only detect what is here it won't and if you've got a mask on absolutely fine there's also um options so if it is going into a certain environment where people are required to wear a mask it will sense that they're not wearing a mask and it will alarm and it will say oh, no mask wow. detected. So you could hook it up to your um, your door entry system and the doors wouldn't open. So, you know, certain clinical areas, there's extra options to the, you know, the, the features and benefits of the product. So yeah, mask doesn't, doesn't affect being able to read your temperature either. That is amazing. I mean, honestly, I'm a bit of a geek when it comes to this sort of thing. Anyways, I find that <laughs> people have watched it, it's probably thinking, what the heck? But, you know, actually to, to have that, you know, as a, as a safety measure has got to be part of your, you know, I guess a number of companies standard operating procedures to make sure that people aren't going into risk areas without sort of due protection. So that, that, that's yeah. really cool. Um, obviously you're a very you know um savvy business lady and yeah. i know you've got a great team around you but you know what's the best piece of advice that you would give to any business person you know in the marketplace right now i'm just curious you're really big enough here carl um so i just think that the best piece of advice is just don't wait you know if you've got ideas if you've got um you know, if your business isn't running at the moment, develop the ideas, get more knowledge, um, and just sort your pro like procedures and stuff. Um, you can never, you know, get this time back and to use it valuably is really important right now. Um, yeah, I just think just invest time in building your business so it comes back stronger and better than before. Wise words there, ladies and gentlemen, wise words indeed. Natalie, is there anything else that you think that we should know about you or know about your businesses at all? Hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, you don't need to know too much about me. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, not really. I think we've covered, you know, uh, you know, numerous topics about the businesses and obviously yep. working with alongside people like you that, have, you know, we've got similar, you know, clients anyway, haven't we, Carl? So um we kind of understand we're working together since you know you've moved to devon but, you know the ins and outs of each other's businesses anyway so hopefully it's come across in this what, what we do and it will help others to understand you know what we do and what, what we can offer really what's the best way for people to reach out and contact you if they've heard something that today that they thought actually i'd love to know more about that how do i reach out and contact natalie what's the best way nat um, yeah, call or email. The office is open um, eight till five every day, and I've got my own email address. So, natalie at finishelectrical.co.uk, where I'll answer any emails, any questions that anyone's got on anything that we've covered today, especially the cameras, as they're quite a new, you know, a new piece of equipment, and they're not really, you know, seen everywhere. And obviously, people can see online what they do and stuff. But if you've got any questions about your environment and what's suitable and etc then any questions we're more than happy to answer that that's brilliant thank you very much for joining us natalie and obviously this is going okay. out on linkedin so i guess anybody connecting with you on linkedin can then message you yes. directly as well of follow course. your page yeah. and all that good stuff as well yeah so uh hopefully that was useful to everybody who's kind of watched this today uh it's a little bit different we've got a whole different array of speakers coming up um, I've got some really exciting speakers coming up over the sort of weeks ahead, so uh, tune in for that. Uh, but uh, from Natalie and myself, thanks very much for watching us today. Take good care. Be safe. Thanks, Carl. Bye for now. Bye.